When you're out there playing, understand that there are eyes on you as a mother, a doctor, a lawyer, and so much more. To love another human being is an act of courage. To love a game is an act that requires courage in every fiber of your being. Because the game of basketball calls those with character, and those with character respond. Knoxville, Tennessee is where I'm originally from, and currently I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. where I'm at medical school at Vanderbilt. You're in medical school, but right now you're in AU, so what made you decide to play basketball again? I graduated from University of Georgia mm -hmm. in 2016, and at that point in time I had already accepted a scholarship to go to medical school at Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. um, tried to, you know, keep playing as I could, but just with, like, the load with medical school, it was just too difficult mm -hmm. to, to juggle and balance. Um, and so it just was more of something that I did like for fitness, like mm -hmm. just to stay in shape. And then about a year and a half ago, um, my fiance passed away and he was, he loved the game. Like basketball was his everything. And uh, he actually passed away playing basketball or mm -hmm. right after um, a professional tryout. So that, in it, that experience brought mm -hmm. me back to the game um, because I just, I needed somewhere to fight mm -hmm. and I needed family. I needed people to cheer me on and just a place to put my pain, my grief, my love, all the complicated feelings mm -hmm. and just put it into something. And that's where basketball kind of came into play for me. And um, it was always his dream to play at the highest level, at the professional level. Mm -hmm. So it's like part of me being here is just finishing out what he started. Walk me through your Georgia yeah. experience. So Georgia, amazing school, mm -hmm. um, great college town, great fan base. Mm -hmm. um, while there, I did two majors. I got a degree in exercise science and then biology. I was very blessed to have supportive coaching staff there. I mm -hmm. think one of the biggest problems that athletes have is you have these ambitions with your career, but when it doesn't align with the practice schedule or the game schedule, you know, they'll tell you, you know, you got to pick a different major. Mm -hmm. You know, this just isn't going to work. He understood what yeah. my goals were and mm -hmm. he was he was on board from day one. So there were times like my junior year, even my sophomore year where I missed practices for labs. The reality of it is most college athletes are there to be an athlete mm -hmm. and um, you know that your professional careers outside of that kind of fall short or fall second to that what, so, what brings you joy family and friends like that's mm -hmm. that's what makes me happy like that's that's always been my inspiration that's why I'm in healthcare that's why I'm in medicine because mm -hmm. I want to help people like mm -hmm. that's that makes me feel fulfilled mm -hmm. and I think that's probably been like the hardest part of just the last year and a half for mm -hmm. me because I had to isolate to get through this mm -hmm. right like I had to kind of um, withdraw a little bit mm -hmm. just from the world um, because it just got so complicated like with COVID mm -hmm. and then yeah. I was juggling school and you know losing the person I wanted to spend my life with like um, I think at a certain point I realized that love is the only answer mm -hmm. no matter what you go through in life whether it be you lose a loved one you're you know, going through a hard time, struggling with family members, struggling with school, on the court, like love is the answer. And, um, you know, by, by being able to pour love into other people, like that was fulfilling for me. You know, I carry myself the way I do mm -hmm. because I understand like, yeah, I'm a product of pain and grief and mm -hmm. failures, but we all are. We mm -hmm. all fall short, we all have our own challenges, but I'm just as much a product of the love that's been poured into me by my friends, my family, and just the communities I've been a part of. And um, I just also know how short life is. Mm. Um, for, for my fiance to pass away chasing his dream, mm. doing what he loves, mm. like that, that's surreal. Anytime I step on a court, that could be my last time. How do I want to be remembered? I started med school in 2016. In 2018, my brother passed away. He overdosed on opioids mm. while I was at Vanderbilt in the opioid research lab. I did what I knew how to do at that point, which mm -hmm. is you just keep going, you keep fighting. Like that's the athlete mentality. It's like whatever you're going through, you just keep pushing. But that's not a healthy way of coping. Mm -hmm. And so it got to the point where I identified that 
I needed to deal with his loss. And so I actually took a break from medical school in 2018. And as I was taking that break, I was about two months from returning back into medical school. Um, and that's when my fiance passed away. He went through the trial, did great, made the team, even mentioned in the trial, like to one of the other guys that was there, like, man, I, I gotta get my, my heart checked out. He leaves the trial and about 30 minutes after he left the trial, he had a heart attack. He made it to the hospital, had a 90% occlusion of the main artery that supplies the heart. Um, it, yeah, um, yeah. sorry. Um, mm. He fought, but he just, he wasn't able to make it through. How were you able to maintain faith and then just be able to maintain connections despite losing two people who were so significant yeah. to your life? Trials and tribulations build character and build faith. Mm -hmm. That's what's allowed me to have grace for myself. Like when I I don't want to be this person. I don't want to feel these things. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be jaded, traumatized, but it's like, this is who I am. This is who God created me to be. And the sooner that I can step into accepting who I am and acting like those things aren't going on, acting like I'm not feeling those things, then that allows me to help other people. I typically ask people like, who are you? But what, what would you say Rakim would say? <laughs> what would Rakim say? He, he just always used to remind me of the why. And I, I think he would say, I just work hard. Like everything, whatever it is, I've always worked hard and wanted to be the best at it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so thankful for this reason, mm -hmm. like being here, yeah. like, I never had a space or an opportunity to play basketball at the professional level mm -hmm. without sacrificing what I wanted to do in mm -hmm. healthcare. And that's just like, I feel like that's a problem in women's mm -hmm. sports. It like, is. You should be able to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, a mother. You should be able to do whatever you want to in the community without having to sacrifice that for basketball. Mm -hmm. And I think that this opportunity is so unique because not only are they telling us, we're gonna give you a space to do that here. You don't have to leave the country. Yeah. Stay here, baby girl. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you the space to play and impact your community and we'll, we'll finance it for you yep. too, right? So this is, I'm just thankful for this. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very thankful for this. If I die tomorrow, I know that I gave my all. All these experiences that I've gone through and realizing how fragile life is, you understand tomorrow is not promised. And so I think that that also by staying in the moment, that also kind of gets out of that like control mindset. Instead of trying to force things to be a different way than they are, you appreciate how they already are. And you find the beauty within them. You find the opportunities within the challenges. I just really want to see the girls here like really have their stories told. Because you have players that have been in the league eight years, 13 years. And it's like, people don't know their story. You don't know their why. You don't know what they're trying to do in the community. Yeah. And so I really hope that not only that does this give people the opportunity to tell their story, but it really gives them the space and opportunity to create change in the communities that they want to. For them to be high level basketball players and to be the lawyer and to be the doctor and to yeah. be whatever else they want to be in life. for giving us your story. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the space and the opportunity, so. Yeah. I, just, I just wanna give you a hug. Big hug. Thank you.